Hello everyone, my name is Ola Mediolawa. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am your grad school advisor. If you are new to this channel, grad school advisor provides fully funded graduate school admission tips, graduate school sustainability advice, and postdoctoral career guidance. So if you want to follow more on these tips, please subscribe on my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I release new videos. And so today, I'll be talking about how to write code emails to professor. Code emails are unsolicited email. And right in this video, I'll be providing a step-by-step -step guidance on how to write an unsolicited email to a professor, wherein you can request for opportunities such as scholarship, assistantship, and other fully funded positions available with the professor. So let's get into it. How to contact a professor for positions and funding opportunities. So sending a code email is one of the top strategies to secure funding for your graduate education. And it is all about sending unsolicited emails to different professors across different universities in the world. So let's talk about the components of a code email. Like every other email, a code email contains a subject and a salutation. It is important to introduce yourself and give reasons why you are sending this unsolicited email to a university professor. Uh, we have there are several professors in the world. You need to provide reasons why you are particular about these professors you are sending emails to. And this may include you trying to indicate how you get to know about the professor. Again, it is important to provide your research experience or just one out of all your research experience. Brag about your results and conclude on a good note. You should have a signature which will contain your name and affiliation. And finally, you should attach some document to support the evidence you have provided in the content of your code email. So right now we are going to be discussing each of these components. Let's begin with subject. Like every other email, it is important that your subject summarize the purpose of your email. It is important that the subject of your email captures the essence of your email. So in this regard, there are some examples that are listed here. An example is MS advisory request, which captures the request of a particular applicant requesting the professor to become his or her advisor. We also have PhD mentorship requests, and uh, thirdly, we can have application for a fully funded PhD opportunity in your lab. So these are specific subjects that can be written as the subject of an email or a code email to a university professor. Salutation. Uh, salutation should include the last name of the professor. For instance, if the last name of the professor is Daniels, then you would have the dear Dr. Daniels. Then let's get to the introduction and reason for your email. Now, these are we are getting into the very important aspect of writing a code email. So this is the introduction and reasons for writing your email. These are some of the items you should include in your introduction. These items does, uh, do not necessarily uh, need to be included as a whole. There are uh, a bit of flexibility that I would say. Sometimes it may not be important to include the name, the nationality. It may just be your undergrad major um, and several other things. You can include the name, your nationality, your undergraduate major, your master's major, your previous university, and where you are, what you are currently doing. It is particularly important to state what you are currently doing. Again, you want to talk about the reasons for sending an email to a professor. Are you sending an email for scholarship inquiry, for assistantship available positions or, or other interests? So the other interest may simply include you trying to request that the professor become your advisor, rather become your PhD mentor. So these are the major things that you may want to include as part of the reasons for you to send an unsolicited email for a particular professor in a particular university. This is an example of the introduction written by an applicant. I read, 
I am a graduate of mass communication and a current master's student in the broadcasting department at Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand. This is the introduction from the student or the applicant. So the student went on to state reasons why he is writing this code email to the professor. I read, this for, I want to apply for a PhD position in mass communication at Harvard University. Thus, I am writing to notify you of my deep interest to join your team. So this is a very good introduction and a reason for sending an email to a university professor. The next thing is why the professor. And here, it is important to state how you get to know about the professor. Uh, and this may include just a random search online, or maybe you come across the professor on social media, or maybe a friend even explained to you there are events where so events such as conferences both virtual and on-site events where a particular applicant can get to know a particular professor so it is also possible to know a professor through his publications a, and as an applicant you might have read some uh, publications where the principal investigator comes to your mind if the work of a particular research group is appealing to you and you feel like sending an email to make inquiry about available positions it is one of those reasons you want to include in your email and again it is important to emphasize how similar your interest is what exactly is your interest try and provide an opportunity to talk about how aligned your interest is to the research interest of the professor in question let's talk about an example i read following your advertisement that specified your need for a motivated phd student to work for your new ro1 grant this is to say that this student get to know about this professor through an advertisement on a social platform I reviewed your profile and I became so enthralled by your significant contribution to genome engineering and models of MDS among others reflected through your publications. I am particularly interested in using CRISPR, IPS, CX, PDX and multiomics to find lasting solution to leukemia. So the student again went on to talk about what caught his attention about uh, the research of the professor and how aligned their research are so i finally he stated that and several of your articles in this subject further assures me that i will get the training i desire if i join your lab the student tried to express how fit how important the research group is to his aspiration and he's so sure that if he joined the laboratory he would perform well research experience you want to summarize one of your previous research you don't want to state or talk about all your research but you want to pick one of the major research you have done in the past when you are reporting research it is important to stress the problem of the research the knowledge gap you filled with your research and state the central hypothesis the key methodology you used your major findings and the significance of your work i have explained this part especially in one of my videos on how to write a stellar statement of purpose for to secure a fully funded graduate school admission if you are here to see this video uh, you can check the link up there so that you can also uh, learn how to write a stellar statement of purpose let's check an example i have been privileged to work on many research problems recently i joined a team to investigate treatment related adverse effects associated with the use of DNA activating agents as cancer chemotherapy. Using animal model, we established the toxic phenotype associated with the use of cyclophosphamide in the brain, liver, kidney, and testes. Through our findings, we showed that combination of ascorbic acid and glycidia sepium extract prevented cetrilobular vacuolization observed in the liver histology of treated groups. Overall, our results show that ascorbic acid is a beneficial supplement for cancer patients on chemotherapy. The findings were later published in 2018. So as you would see, this research, in, uh, this research experience contains the problem, the methodology, the findings, and the significance, which are 
uh, freshly color coded brag about your results you should have a section where brain you'll be able to brag about your results if you have good bs bachelor's transcript or master's transcript you want to brag about your results if you have good GRE score, brag about your GRE score. And if you have some very good language proficiency score, it is also important to brag about it. So let's check one example of such. My ability is further reflected in my transcripts, GRE score, and Duolingo English test, which are attached in this email. So far, I have significant teaching experience and I'm particularly open public speaking opportunities such as presentation, undergraduate teaching, and training in the lab. Conclusion. So, just going to be giving a sample of how to conclude on a good note. And I read, I have attached my CV, writing samples, and other relevant documents, which expand on my experience and qualification. I would be glad to discuss the opportunity to join your lab. Finally, I will follow up with you in four days via email, only to make sure you receive this email. Thank you for your time and consideration. One very important aspect of this is the fact that this applicant included that I will, he is going to follow up in four days so which means if you you can as well indicate this in your email and um, after four days if you have not received any message from the professor given that the professor may be busy as of that time so you can just reply to the email you previously sent as a form of reminder or follow-up email mm -hmm. and this again we we show that you are tenacious so finally let's talk about the email signature some of those things you want to include in your email signature especially if you have not introduced yourself by name so you want to include your full name your position your affiliation and address if you have a google scholar link or url to your research gates to your linkedin you also want to include it so i'm going to be giving some example here uh, this is an example of a research scientist uh the name is olamide olauba and is a research scientist division of surgery school of medicine at the university of missouri and that is the address and again there is a link so this is uh, i'm guessing this is an hyperlink linked to this word so which we take the students to the research uh the the professor to the research gate profile the google scholar profile and the LinkedIn profile of the applicant so and again you before you send your email you want to attach some document and um, your cv is an important document you want to include your transcript your test score part especially if they are wonderful and one of your paper if the research interest you talked about in this unsolicited or cold email has resulted to a publication uh you can include one of these as it can form your writing sample so we have come to the end of this video please share subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time i release new video thank you for your attention see you in the next video